So I'm back, back in the east of England, not on the GDMBR. My transition back into normal life is going well. I'm becoming less and less feral each day. I've had quite a lot of questions and I thought I'd do a quick video answering some of them, some of the more common ones anyway. Namely, what I would change, the decisions I made before I set off, and whether I'd do anything different. And also a lot of people have asked how much it cost. So I'm going to go into that and then I put some thought into how I could have done it cheaper. I think I should think about how to do these things cheaper in the future. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to do many of them. So, some of the questions. Timing. I decided to ride this route in July and August. I'm trying to think why, and I can't really remember. I believe there was a window of uh, when you're supposed to do it, and that might have been July, August, September, October, I think. And I'm just impatient. That was the reason. I just thought, no, I'm going to do it as soon as I can. Now, would I change it? No, definitely not. Because I had perfect conditions, I would say, for the whole two months. I had rain in the second half, but, uh, you know, that's, rain is rain. It doesn't really bother me. The direction. I decided to go southbound. I think that's what most people do. That was one reason why I chose to do it. Secondly, New Mexico is hard and everybody told me it was hard and I thought it was easier to go southbound. Having ridden the route now, I would say it's definitely easier to go southbound. Um, starting in New Mexico would have been difficult. There's so many considerations. The, the availability of water, the terrain, the um, distance between resupplies. Um, yeah, I would say it's easier going southbound. So I went with uh, Sonder Broken Road. The reason I went for that is because I wanted the pinion gearbox. That was my primary concern. I wanted maintenance free and I wanted a belt drive. And I'm very happy I went that way. There was no maintenance. I washed the bike out of guilt, not very often, and it worked perfectly. There was a small issue with the belt popping off, but I know now that was my fault. I've remedied that. I've learned my lesson. I, I, I'm happy. I'm happy. Bear in mind I'm not an expert. This is the only bike I've ever ridden on a long distance trail. I could jump on a different one and like it a lot more. I, I really don't know. I can say for me, I would say it worked fine. If I'd have had a bike with a derailleur that was a capable bike, I definitely wouldn't change it. I would have been happy if I'd have already had a bike. And now I didn't, so I needed to buy a new one anyway. But yeah, in hindsight, if I needed to uh, spend a bit less maybe and, and get a bike with a derailleur, definitely I, I could have. I would still buy this if I was to um, need a new bike though. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I have got it. I was looking at, what's that one I was looking at? A Surly Bridge Club. That's an awesome bike, an awesome bike. And that's, I think you can get them for about $1,200, $1,300. And that would definitely be fine on the trip. I saw a few of them out there and uh, I strangely want one. I don't need one, but uh, I like that sort of basic, well-made, no frills sort of approach. And the Surly Bridge Club is that bike. I would add a front rack and I've ordered a front rack. Um, I would have liked to have carried more food and I think I would have liked to have brought a tarp in addition to the tent just so I could have set that up when it was raining and uh, not be confined to the tent which did happen quite a few times. I would like to have been able to just sit outside and cooked and you know it's, there's something nice about being out in the rain when you're not getting wet. So uh, yeah, carrying capacity and food. I wish I'd carried more food because I was always hungry. And Bill 
had lots of food and coincidentally a front rack and he was never hungry so yeah front rack that's it yeah i wouldn't change anything else i mean i'm lucky considering this was my first proper trip i think i got it quite right i mean i researched everything to death which is my way and it paid off i suppose one thing to add to the uh equipment sort of discussion it obviously depends on how fast you're going if you're doing 30 days or you're looking to finish in 30 days then you go lighter weight and if you're going to take longer then you go heavier weight i think i would have done it a little longer if i was to do it again maybe 70 days i did it in 62 but i think i would have done it in 70 75 maybe just so i could have explored more I would have liked to have done a few sort of uh, side trails, hikes, but uh, who knows? It's hard to think how I felt whilst I was on the trail because I'm saying I would have done it in more days and I could have done it in more trails, in more, more days. And uh, I didn't. So I don't know. I don't know. If I do it again, I'll let you know. moved to a different location apparently it's the way to keep your audience you all get bored if I sit in the same place for too long children so costings I've worked it out in total I'm gonna to do it in dollars I think because even though I'm in Britain you're gonna be spending in dollars so I think that's the easiest way I spent $7,966 in total. But I'll break it down for you. The biggest expense was meals out, 2,846. Lodgings were next, 1,310. Resupplies, um, so just, you know, grocery stores, things for eating when I'm not in towns, $748. Um, flights, of course, that's unique to me. Uh, $2,244. The flight home was ridiculously expensive. That includes, you know, luggage fees, all that sort of stuff. Uh, maintenance, $475. And miscellaneous, $342. So yeah, $7,966 approximately. I didn't stay in as many hotels as I thought I was going to because of warm showers. Um, I wish I'd done that earlier on. Now you shouldn't think of warm showers as being free and I don't. And you, you do need to pay it forward or you should pay it forward. And I will pay it forward by doing a similar thing, hosting people. But still, you know, it's it's uh, it's a good way of cutting down the costs. Maintenance, I said four hundred and seventy-five dollars. I put two new tires on whilst I was out, and I didn't really need to. They weren't new when I set off. Uh, you should get uh, the whole tour done on one set of tires, so you might be able to take them off. The miscellaneous is things that I bought. Uh, water bladders, I bought some of those. I bought some different tools when I was out there. Nothing essential. So. I sat down with Ross and he helped me work out a way of reducing it, what you could do, how you could do it cheaper. And we came out with a theoretical minimum. Uh, of course, then you can get anywhere between them. So this was also based on a 50 day tour, because that's another good way of cutting down the cost. A theoretical minimum, this is. So you could do uh, fewer meals out, I reckon you could do $100 a week. That'd be three or four meals out a week. I think that's reasonable, giving you a total cost of $700. Lodgings, you don't really need to do hotels at all. Uh, I did them at the beginning and the end of the trip, and that's a large part of my costs for the, for the lodgings. 
and I didn't need to. You could do hostels. You can you can start quicker on the trip. You can uh, do campsites. You don't need uh, hotels for showers or laundry. Most RV parks have them. So as a as a guess, we came up with fifteen dollars every other night. So you wouldn't even need that. A lot of campsites are cheaper, and a lot of them are free. So I would say three hundred and seventy five dollars would be a an easy target to meet for lodgings. Resupplies are more complicated because if you cut down the amount of food that you eat out you need more for resupplies my resupply bill uh, was higher because I didn't didn't pay too much attention to where I was buying food I, I spent more than I needed to if I'd have carried more food and had the capacity to carry more food I would have been able to buy more cheaper buy from Walmart, Family Dollar, not gas stations and some of these little tiny shops um, on campsites and things. They just, they rip you off. I mean, it's, it's crazy. For instance, Cliff Bar's a staple. You can spend $5 on a Cliff Bar in a gas station or a dollar in Walmart if you buy in bulk. So, you know, you can reduce that right down. So I'd say you could get away with $750 for a resupply cost. Maintenance, chains brake pads there's certain things you have to have so 150 dollars there and miscellaneous things that break um you know there's always going to be something say you factored in 200 dollars that all comes to 2175 dollars i think you could do this tour in 50 days comfortably on 2175 dollars and that's so cheap when you think about it how what else could you do for two months um and spend that little. I think it's cheaper to hike, but you know, we're talking about bike packing here. So yeah, that's a theoretical low end. Um, I would go somewhere in between, you know, there's a big difference between what I spent close to $8,000 and close to $2,000. I think I could, uh, with a bit more thought, and if I did do it again, I definitely would probably look to be spending probably five thousand dollars something like that i've got all these notes look i've got pages and pages of them this is all not off the top of my head instructions from ross demands i would turn them and my papers blowing all over the place so you know ordinarily i wouldn't announce how much i spend on stuff but you know i'm not i don't want to hide it uh it's not like I'm showing off. Eight thousand dollars is a lot of money, but I there's things I've cancelled. I was supposed to do the PCT last year. I had to cancel that. That would have cost a lot more, just by nature of the amount of time you're out on the trail. That's another thing to factor. You know, it's two months off work, I suppose. Um, you have to add the cost of loss of earnings. But yeah, I was going to do a six-month PCT through hike. That would have cost me a lot more. I was supposed to be doing the CDT when COVID and all that stuff happened. So I think this is, I've treated myself this time. Uh, in future, I'll be doing it cheaper. Uh, what else have I got to talk about? Meeting pe yes, uh, how meeting people to, to ride with help keep costs down. See, that's the thing. I met up with John uh, quite early on and we split hotel rooms. So there's a, a massive saving to, to, to be had there and campsites, uh, strangely enough. If you really want to take it to extremes, even when you're resupplying, if you buy in bulk, you know, packets of 12, say, cliff bars, and split six each, you can you can do it cheaper there. Uh, things like that. It definitely helps to keep the cost down. And at the end, Bill, John and I shared a hotel in El Paso for three nights. So, you know, that was the equivalent of one night each. Very cheap. I would like to have done more wild camping. When I was in Grizzly territory, I confess I wanted to be on a proper campsite because of bear lockers and just you, you've got people around you I tried to do that where I could otherwise you could um, do more wild camping and save money there but it did play on my mind and I wasn't the only one as unlikely as it is to be bothered by a bear if you do the correct thing and hang your food don't sleep your food they're still grizzly bears. It's, it's just funny. If there's an option of spending $10 to stay in a campsite, I would do it. That that was my feeling. Yeah, I think that's it costings-wise. I haven't got much more to add to it. 
I suppose people have asked me about the mental challenge of all this, and I would say the mental challenge is the biggest challenge. I think anyone can condition themselves to be able to ride 50 miles a day. And you do get fitter as you go along. But I did have days where I didn't want to, to ride. I think I even announced it for a couple of them, but not many. You know, it's just, I think every time I just, all you've got to do is, and I'm no expert, I'm not giving you advice here, I'm saying what I did. If I had a day and I was thinking I didn't want to be doing it, I just had to think about, you know, going to work and what, what other people have to do. I'm, I'm in a beautiful place doing something I love and I just tell myself not to be such a little bitch. That's That's the truth of it. And I did tell myself that lots of times and I strangely listened to myself. It's a privilege. I mean, how lucky to be able to go out and do stuff like that. There's so many people that can't, that would love to. So that was my way of dealing with it. But, I mean, to be honest, I, I was having a fantastic time out there. I, I loved it. So it's the next day. I'm back home. I was thinking last night. Um, I didn't want this to seem like an instructional video. I am still a novice at bikepacking. What I am an expert in, I guess, is how to do it the way I did it. <laughs> but I just wanted to reinforce that if you wanted to do this ride, you don't need to be a, a seasoned bike packer, you don't need to be an expert. Sort of what I'm saying is if I can do it, then I think most people can do it. A reasonable amount of fitness, uh, a reasonable knowledge, be able to ride a bike without stabilizers and my aim and the reason for making this video is to encourage more people to do it I've had lots of comments where people saying they've been inspired and that's extremely nice to hear it's uh, yeah I've said it before overwhelming I think but if you want to do it you can that's what I'm saying if you can get yourself a decent bike you can get the time off work, you have some money. I think I've made it uh, clear you don't need to spend as much as I did. And you can get yourself in the right position mentally. I think anyone could do it. I genuinely do. So that's it really. I hope this video has been useful. Finally, I'd just like to mention that I'm gonna be uh, doing a live stream uh, Q&A. So if you have any questions, see if you can turn up to that. If you can't, put the questions in the comments below and I'll answer any questions that people have. You, it can't be too silly a question, it, it can't be too obvious a question and just put whatever you think, anything you're thinking of, I would uh, appreciate it. Um, and that's going to be on 22nd of September at 7pm UK time. Be interesting to see how that goes. Wasps. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. I'm not sure uh, if many are going to turn up, but uh, I don't know. Why not? Give it a try. Thanks for watching.